Hello and thank you so much for tuning in to the channel today. We are continuing along in the works of Dr. Miles Monroe, Rediscovering the Kingdom Expanded Edition. I hope the readings are a blessing to you. I also hope and pray that you are fully grasping the concepts that Dr. Monroe helps us to um, understand. It will take some getting used to because just like he said, for over 2,000 years, the message of the kingdom has been watered down, almost down to nothing in a sense that when we do visit um, church organizations today, very rarely do we um, get to hear a message about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the original intent of our even being here. So I don't want to go off um, off schedule. I do want to continue on with the reading. So please follow along with me. I am beginning chapter 3, Enter the King and the Kingdom. You cannot lose what you never had. Chapter 3, Enter the King and the Kingdom. The Birth of the Kingdom Announcer. A few years ago, just after September 11th, I was scheduled to speak at a conference in Pennsylvania. When I arrived at the Pittsburgh airport, I found an unusually large crowd clogging the terminal. After being detained for over an hour, our driver was finally allowed to go and get the car. I noticed as we emerged from the baggage claim area that it looked like a war zone. There were police, security, and army officers everywhere. For a moment, I thought some terrorist act had occurred. My driver worked up the nerve to ask one of the army officers the reason for so much security activity. His answer shocked me. After warning us that traffic throughout the whole city would be heavy, he said we should be prepared to have our vehicles searched any time anywhere that day. The reason, he explained, for the heightened security was that the President of the United States was coming to Pittsburgh in three days. I could not believe what I was hearing. All of this commotion for a man who was not even in town yet, who was not arriving for, an, for three days. I asked the officer why all this activity so far in advance. We're preparing for the coming of the president. As we drove away, I couldn't help think that this is the very thing that occurs in all kingdoms when royalty is expected. In the Bahamas, where I was born and still live, when we were a colony of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, whenever the queen or any member of the royal family were scheduled to visit our island territory, preparations began months in advance. The streets were swept, street lights cleaned, schools painted, flags hung, and so much more. The principle being, whenever a sovereign is to arrive, it is announced and preparations are made far in advance. Even the people have to be prepared. This was the role of John the Baptist, the announcer of the king. John was keeping kingdom royal protocol. His job was to prepare the people, the nation, and the way for the coming of the king who would bring the kingdom. The scripture describes John in this way. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Matthew 3, 1 through 3. John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of the one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. John 1, 23. Please note that John's message was not about a religion, but the kingdom of heaven. It is important to understand that John was the most unique prophet of the entire Bible. In fact, Jesus stated that John was the greatest of all the prophets that had ever lived. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, 
there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew 11:11. 11, 11. Why does John hold such a prominent position among the prophets? Because all the prophets before John spoke only of the coming of the Messiah King and the coming of the kingdom, while John had the privilege of announcing, presenting, meeting, and baptizing the King of the kingdom. Understanding Our Role as Kings The birth of Jesus was announced as the birth of a king, not a priest. This is very important because it emphasizes the primary focus of the mission of Jesus and his purpose for coming to earth. Hear his words concerning his purpose for coming. His priesthood was his redemptive function, but to be king was his eternal disposition. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. John 18.37 From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. John 19.12 But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. Luke 4.43 What was the mission and purpose of Jesus? The greatest tragedy in life is not death. It is life without a purpose. The most important discovery in life is the discovery of purpose. Purpose is defined as the original intent or motivation for something. Purpose is also defined as the reason or desired result for the initiation or an action of production of a thing. Simply put, purpose is the why of a thing. Without a clear understanding of purpose, life becomes an experiment. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Without purpose, activity has no meaning, and time and energy are misused. Purpose determines what is right. Purpose protects us from doing something good at the expense of the right. Purpose is the predetermined, established, intended result of a thing. The great king of Israel, Solomon, expressed the critical importance of the concept of purpose in his book of Proverbs this way. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19.21 This statement implies the priority of purpose as compared to a plan of action. It suggests that the most important interest of the Creator is His original intent for his actions and creation. This is why we must seriously and carefully consider when discussing the most important subject of God's purpose and plan for humanity that we revisit the purpose, message, and assignment of Jesus Christ. The Original Mission of Jesus The controversial movie of 2004 the Passion, produced by actor-producer Mel Gibson, stirred the whole world about the life and death of Jesus Christ. There has been much controversy and debate down through the years over the life, message, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, especially within the religious community. There are many views and opinions as to what his real mission was. Scholars have dissected, examined, reviewed, revised, and written volumes on these subjects. Yet many are still confused as to what his mission, message, methods, and purpose were for coming to earth. However, for us 
to discover the original purpose and mission of Jesus, it should be obvious that we must consider his own declarations concerning his purpose and assignment for coming into the world. Let's read a few of them from the records of his close friends in the gospel narrative. His first public statement was made at the beginning of his earthly mission when he was 30 years old after being baptized by his cousin John the Baptist and completing 40 days of fasting during which he overcame Satan's temptations to compromise his assignment. From that time on Jesus began to preach, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, Matthew 4:17. The word near, in some translations rendered at hand, simply means has arrived. In other words, his first declaration was the introduction and arrival of a kingdom, not a religion. In essence, he brought a government to earth. Let's look at some other declarations by Jesus concerning his purpose and mission on earth. As you go, preach this message the kingdom of heaven is near, Matthew 10, 7. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you, Matthew 12, 28. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants, Matthew eighteen twenty three. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Matthew 24, 14. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Luke 4, 43 through 44. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Luke 8, 1. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Luke 9:11. But seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. Luke 12:31. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Luke 12:32. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached, and everyone is forcing his way into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the least stroke of a pen to drop out of the law. Luke 16, 16 through 17. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Luke 18, 17. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me. Luke twenty two twenty nine. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Gen John 18, 36 through 37. These are only a few of the declarations made by Jesus concerning his mission, purpose, and message, and it is obvious that his intent was to declare, establish, and invite all men to enter the kingdom of God. This is in direct contrast with the focus on religious activity and religion's preoccupation with going to heaven, it seems as if the message and priority of Jesus was the occupation and reclamation of earth rather than designing an escape hatch to heaven for mankind. 
There is a verse of scripture that has challenged my thinking for years, and perhaps it may shed some light on this issue for you also. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Matthew 5.5 5. It is interesting to note that the promise is for the inheritance of earth rather than heaven. Also, his dominion of earth and its environment was declared by Jesus as the return of the kingdom of God to earth. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Matthew 12, 28. This verse seems to indicate the return of the dominion power that Adam lost in his disobedience. Jesus came to earth not to bring a religion, but a kingdom, the governing influence of the kingdom of heaven on earth. The message proclaims the opportunity for all mankind to regain its lost dominion over earth and its environment through the reception of the Holy Spirit of God, and consequently the reconnection of earth with heaven. This is why it is called good news or gospel. The message of the kingdom of God is the most important news ever delivered to the human race. Jesus came to earth to announce the arrival of this kingdom and to establish it in people's hearts through his death and resurrection. As the Son of God, Jesus Christ was the exact likeness of his Father and represented him perfectly on earth. To all those who believed in and followed him, Jesus restored their citizenship rights in the kingdom of heaven and imparted his spirit so that they could represent him and the government of heaven on earth. This representation is known as government diplomacy. The following statement is a political statement that is very common to all kingdoms, including our contemporary governments. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me. Luke twenty-two twenty-nine. This statement is always used at the appointment of an official representative of a government to other nations. This is the position of an ambassador. This is not a religious designation, but a governmental one. Heaven's Ambassadors on Earth Every nation appoints ambassadors and envoys to represent its interest to other nations. The kingdom of heaven is no different, as it is the prototype of kingdoms. God chose to communicate the message of his kingdom throughout the earth, not through religious people, but through personal representatives. God's chosen strategy for proclaiming his kingdom was to employ ambassadors. An ambassador is a political appointee whose job is to represent and speak for his or her home government before the rulers of other countries. In the eyes of those rulers, the word of an ambassador is the word of the government that he or she represents. Good ambassadors never speak their personal opinions, but only the official policies of the government that appointed them. In the same way, the people of God are his ambassadors on the earth. Scripture clearly teaches this. God chose Moses to deliver the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and then to represent himself before them. Prophets represented God and spoke his messages of warning and judgment to a nation that had turned away from him. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, Paul writes, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. As ambassadors of heaven, we represent our Father's kingdom on earth. If we are to be effective, it is important that we understand what we are talking about. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I believe now would be a good time for us to go ahead and um, stop part one of chapter three. The chapters are longer 
I know I stated that earlier in the recordings, but I just wanted to come back on and reiterate that, that they are longer. And so that um, you'll see that the chapters are being split into maybe three to four sections. It's little 20 minute excerpts of the chapters. But nevertheless, I do hope they are being a blessing to you and your family. Please repeat these words as often as you can. Everything that you've heard in these chapters so far, we need it is imperative we need to hear it we need others to hear it we have some two billion people who are not of the way who are not followers who are not kingdom citizens and so you never know who god will use um, or place in your surroundings who will be able to take what you've explained and push it out and pass it within their homes communities families everywhere so please be bold, continue the work that you've started. God is surely going to finish. He's going to complete the work he started in each one of us, right? We believe that. I know I do believe that. Um, one other thing real quickly, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. To those of you who have, I appreciate the support. I pray for you daily. I love you with the love of Christ. And one final thing, tell as many people as you can about the channel. As far as um, those people who may not have access to the internet, share with them the things that we are discussing, that we are reading, that we are having um, placed on the channel these days. If you have any suggestions for readings, upload them to the uh, comment section. I'll definitely consider them. I have already purchased the next book, um, but I'm not going to share the next book until I'm completed with reading this one, right? So. Thank you as always. God bless and have a wonderful day. Bye.